Today I got a brand new Lenovo IdeaPad 3. I'm going to install this and do some cloning. Let's get started. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I got this brand new Lenovo IdeaPad 3. Uh, it's a 15.6 inch laptop. I'm simply going to upgrade the M.2 NVMe SSD from a 256 gigabyte to a 1 terabyte. It's, uh, using, I'm going to use a Samsung SSD 980. But if you're doing this at home and you want to know how to clone it, I'm going to show you how you can clone the factory one onto a brand new one can be any brand. Uh, well, in this case, I'm going to use the free Samsung data migration software, and I've already got it installed on the laptop. And once the clone is done, I'm going to simply install it. Now, all that's on here is Windows 11. There's no actual data because it literally is brand new out of the box. So that's what I'm going to do. This laptop model is 15i TL6. It's got a 15.6 inch full HD display. Pretty nice little laptop. Nice and thin, narrow bezel. I like that. Um, it's got the Core, uh, Core i5 1135G7 processor, Intel Iris XE graphics. It's got 12 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 in it. Uh, it's got one expansion slot, four gigabytes on board. Currently has eight gigabytes in the expansion slot, total of 12. And like I said, it's got the 256 M.2 NVMe in it. It's a Western Digital SN530, which is pretty common for factory M.2 drives. It's a 2242, it's a little short one. And I'll show you what's that, what that, <laughs> what's that all about inside. Uh, backlit keyboard, uh, standard slots, USB-C, A. It's got an SD card slot over there and a 42 watt hour battery. It does have a fingerprint reader, the Goodix fingerprint reader over here as well. Kind of nice. Alright guys, let's get into the cloning. Like I said, I already got the data migration software from Sam Samsung installed. I'm going to be using a USB to M.2 NVMe adapter like this one. Um, this, this one here, you just slide it open. It's going to place our drive right in there. No tools required. Now, there's a lot of different types of these adapters available. If you're installing an NVMe M.2 drive, just make sure you get one that supports that kind of drive. There are some that only support M.2 SATA drive, so be mindful of that. I'm using a USB-C to C cable. This type here comes with a C to A as well, in case your laptop doesn't have, doesn't have a USB-C port. So I'm going to plug it into my USB-C port. Now, before you actually start cloning, there's a few little things you should do first. The most important one is open up. Now, this applies to Windows 10 as well, but go to your settings. Over here, I'm going to go to privacy and security. Again, this is Windows 11. Up here where it says device encryption. Got to go up here, and you can see that it's turned on. You can't clone with that turned on. You have to turn this off. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. And this does take some bit of time to do its thing. We just got to wait for it to get all the way done there. Now, this has just got Windows 11 on it. Not a lot of data or no data, basically. Uh, if you have a lot of data on your computer and programs and apps, this process can take quite a while. So you just got to let that finish. You can keep using the computer, but you can't clone until this is all the way off. So hopefully it won't take too long, but I won't bore you with all that. A <clears throat> um, couple other things, make sure you got your AC adapter plugged in. You don't want to be doing this on a low battery. Try not to be connected to the internet, uh, so it's not downloading updates or whatever in the background. Just disconnect from the internet during your cloning process. Also, if you go to like your C drive that's in here right now, here's our 256. If you just right click on it, go to properties, Click on Tools. You can run this check. It'll just scan your disk for er for errors, whatever. It might even tell you you got to reboot. And if it does, just go ahead and do it. You can also open up the command prompt and just run check disk slash R or slash F. R takes a lot longer than slash F. So just make sure you don't have any open apps and programs going if you can help it during the cloning process. Um, like I said, it really depends on how much stuff you got on your computer. So I'm going to let this encryption get all the way through the turning off process here. Then we can jump into the actual cloning. 
All right, guys, device encryption is now turned off. It took, in this case, I don't know, about five, six minutes. But again, if you got a lot of data on your computer, uh, I've had this on slower computers take quite some time. So anyway, um, just be mindful of that. Now, if you're working on a, you know, cloning a system where you, maybe you did a clean install of Windows 10 or 11 yourself, you probably won't even have the device encryption option. I really only see that on the factory OEM installs, like from the manufacturer, in this case Lenovo, could be Acer, HP, Dell. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind as well. Now it's not BitLocker. BitLocker you're going to get if you have a Windows 11 or 10 Pro, but this is just home edition. Um, but those OEMs have that device encryption. So now that we got that turned off, we can go right into our cloning. So I'm going to open up the free Samsung data migration software, double click it. Hit yes, I got my got my drive plugged in to the USB-C port. I'm gonna go up here for our source drive. You can see it's the Western Digital SN530. That's a very standard drive I see OEMs install. Um, target drive, we're gonna choose the SSD 980 that I have plugged into the USB adapter. And all I'm gonna do is click on the start button and it's just telling you that it's gonna um, delete anything on the target drive and it'll probably and it'll shut down once the process is complete. So I'm going to let the clone go. It shouldn't take very long. Again, there's not a lot of stuff on here. Once the clone's done, we'll just open up, install the new drive and should be good. All right, now it's just saying the system's going to shut down in 20 seconds. It's count down, so I'm just going to click shut down now. I'm going to remove my USB to M.2 adapter here. Take out the drive, nice and warm. And I'm going to unplug my cord, of course. Make sure the laptop's all the way off before you open it up. Now, I already took out all the screws because I typically don't like to bore you with that. But uh, along the front edge here of the laptop, these four screws are, are, are short ones. The rest of these screws are all the same length. So just make sure you get the short ones back in the front edge here. <clears throat> I'm going to get my little plastic spudger tool here that I love. And on these, you can pretty much start just about anywhere. I'm going to start right along the... Yeah, shoot, let me adjust this a little bit. Bear with me, guys. I'm going to start right along the front edge here with my spudger. Just slide it along here. And take your time with this. Cracking and popping is a good thing. These should come off pretty darn easy. Be gentle, though. Get my little nylon spudger tool here. Persuade it. Comes off. I see they got some copper here in the important areas for the CPU, GPU, and of course our SSD, which is nice. Bring this out there wide. There you go. Okay. So if you want, you can go ahead and disconnect your battery before you proceed. It's connected to the motherboard right here. Just slides back. So I'll go ahead and I'll just pop that out but if you're going to do that go ahead and carefully open it up and just go ahead and hold the power button in a few times so we can discharge any residual juice flowing around in there and don't touch anything you don't have to I always say and make sure you're protected against static discharge which I am here my bench tops are all anti-static people have asked me that's carpet yeah but it's anti-static 25 years, I've never had a problem. Our floors, we treat it, it's anti-static, guaranteed. Um, here's our M.2 drive, it's a 2242. They use this funky little adapter here to fit it in the 2280 anchor hole here. So we're gonna remove that. Um, here's the battery, of course. It's got a CMOS battery right there. And here's your Wi-Fi card. So I'm going to go ahead and use a number zero Phillips right here to take this one screw out. 
Like I said, even though the battery's disconnected, just be careful not to drop your screws and tools if you can help it, guys. Oh, there goes the adapter. It's just this funky little adapter that attaches. Here's the drive. So put that over there. And all I'm going to do is put the 2280 back in its place. Because here's the mounting hole right here. And it should boot right up. Ah, there's my screw. Guy that bought this just wanted more than 256 gigabytes of storage. It's not a gaming laptop, but he's going to put a lot of stuff on here. Let's mount that back in there. Just like that, I'll go ahead and I'll use the little thermal pad they got here. I got my own, but I might as well repurpose this one. And I'm going to put it right down here, close to the controller. Try to get it lined up really well. You know what? I'm going to take that off. <clears throat> Let's see here. I'm going to use my own. I want a longer one. Spread that heat out with that copper little plate they got on there. Just give me a minute here, guys. I'm just going to put a longer one on here to cover it evenly. This will look prettier. Getting this stuff off there is always fun. Ah. Come on. That'll be difficult. Sorry if you can't see that, guys, but I was just trying to get the protective film they had on there off of there. So, let's lay this one in place. No easy way to do this, but... I just want to get it on there as straight as I can. There, now we got it on both. Okay? So that's basically it, guys. I'm going to hook my battery back up. And again, be careful once you hook that battery back up. Please. Make sure it goes in all the way. So we got the new SSD, the one terabyte SSD 980. Gonna lay the bottom back on. I won't put all the screws back in until I know everything's kosher or good. Just don't squeeze too hard on your lid, I always tell you, because if you squeeze really hard, you, you can actually damage your screen. There's a screen's right up against this. All right, so that should be good. Open it up, hit the power button. See what happens. And it looks like we got a good clone. Look at that. Now when you're all done, you can uninstall your data migration software. You won't need it for any time soon. It's free, you can always reinstall it if you need to. So actually, let's just go over here. Put this PC, boom. There's our one terabyte Samsung SSD 980. So that's how you would do a clone. Guys, check out more of my videos. Give me a like and hit that sub button. That would be great. I appreciate you watching. Have a great day.